Catholic boy, Shaunaki, and the Unity Squad. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, as Pope Benedict formally steps down today, speculation mounts over who will become the next pope. On Wednesday, Pope Benedict bid an emotional farewell at his last general audience, saying he understood the gravity of his decision to become the first pontiff to resign in nearly 600 years. The 85-year-old pope cited ill health as the reasons for his departure. Addressing an estimated 150,000 supporters in St. Peter's Square, Pope Benedict said he is resigning for the good of the Church. In these past months, I have felt that my strength has decreased, and I have asked God, earnestly in prayer, to enlighten me and, with His light, make me take the right decision, not for my good, but for the good of the Church. I have taken this step in full awareness of its gravity and also its rarity, however, with a profound serenity of spirit. Loving the Church also means having the courage to take difficult and anguished choices, always having in mind the good of the church and not oneself. I was deeply grateful for the understanding, support and prayers of so many of you, not only here in Rome, but also throughout the world. The decision I have made after much prayer is the fruit of a serene trust in God's will and the deep love of Christ's church. I will continue to accompany the church with my prayers and I ask each of you to pray for me and for the new pope. Pope Benedict's tenure was marked by several scandals, perhaps most notably his handling of sexual abuse scandals in the Catholic Church, including allegations he ignored at least one case of abuse while serving as a cardinal. Documents show in 1985, when he was known as Cardinal Ratzinger, he delayed efforts to defrock a priest convicted of molesting children. Meanwhile, last year, he oversaw an assessment from the Vatican that found the largest and most influential group of Catholic nuns in the United States had, quote, serious doctrine problems, because it had challenged the Church's teachings on homosexuality and the male-only priesthood, among other things. More recently, Italian news sources say an investigation by three cardinals into leaked Vatican documents show rampant corruption in the Vatican ranks. For more, we go to San Francisco, where we're joined by Matthew Fox. He's the author of over two dozen books, most recently, The Pope's War, Why Ratzinger's Secret Crusade Has Imperiled the Church and How It Can Be Saved. He's a former Catholic priest who was first stopped from teaching liberation theology and creation spirituality by then-Cardinal Ratzinger. Fox was then expelled from the Dominican order, to which he'd belonged for 34 years. He currently serves in a, as an Episcopal priest. Matthew Fox, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you first respond to the Pope stepping down and that, the significance? Well, thank you, Amy and Juan. I, I really appreciate your your journalism. It means a lot to a lot of us. Uh, yeah, I think that I'll take the Pope at his word here when he says he's tired. Uh, I would be tired, too, if I had left as much devastation in my wake as he has, uh, first as Inquisitor General under the previous Pope. He brought the Inquisition back. and. It's true, I was one of the theologians expelled by him, but I list 104 others in, uh, in my book, and, uh, and it keeps growing, the list keeps growing. So that's how history will remember this, this man, uh, as, as bringing the Inquisition back, which is completely contrary to the spirit and the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, which was an effort to reform the Church. Uh, so I think he's stepping down because he can't take it anymore. It's become a viper's nest there, obviously, the Vatican is. I really think that, as a theologian, I see the Holy Spirit at work in all this. I think that the Catholic Church, as we know it, the structure of, uh, of the Vatican is passé. It's, uh, we're moving beyond it, and it's, it's become a viper's nest. It's, uh, it's really sick what's going on, obviously, the cover-up of the pedophile priests. Uh, and you can see it everywhere. Cardinal Mahoney in Los Angeles, this cardinal in Scotland, uh, Cardinal Law, who was elevated after he left Boston, uh, given a promotion running a fourth-century basilica in Rome. 
and this pope himself. The, the recent documentary came out a, year, uh, a week or two ago from HBO about how the buck stopped with him regarding these horrible things that went on at a school for the deaf in Milwaukee, where over 200 boys, uh, deaf boys, were abused by a priest, and Ratzinger knew it. This Father Maciel, who was so close to the previous pope that he took him on plane rides with him, uh, abused 20 seminarians, and he had two wives on the side and abused four of his own children. And uh, Ratzinger knew about this man for 10 years. That document was on his desk, and he did nothing until the year 2005. So history and cheerleading of, of popes, what I call papalolatry, will not cover up the facts. Uh, this has been the most sordid 42 years of Catholic history since the Borgias. And um, as I say, I think it's really about ending that church as we know it. I think Protestantism, too, needs a, a reboot. I think all of Christianity can get back more to the teachings of Jesus, a revolutionary around love and justice. Uh, that's what it's about. And that's why there's been such fierce resistance all along uh, from the right wing. The CIA has been involved in the especially with Pope John Paul II, the, the, the decimation of liberation theology all over South America, the replacing of these heroic uh, leaders, including bishops and, and cardinals, uh, with Opus Dei cardinals and bishops who are, are, well, frankly, it's a fascist organization, Opus Dei is. It's all about obedience. It's not about ideas or theology. They haven't produced one theologian in, in 40 years. They produce canon lawyers and people who infiltrate where the power is, whether it's the media, uh, the Supreme Court, um, or uh, the FBI, the CIA, and finance, especially in, in Europe. Well, so I'd like to ask it's you been for a very a... sordid mess that's been going on. Uh, in some of your writings, you have uh, raised the, 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 the point of view that both uh, Pope Benedict and his predecessor, uh, John Paul, were actually leading a schism, uh, and that, in, in fact, that they were attempting to overthrow the decisions of the Second Vatican Council. But for many Americans who are no, no longer familiar, because they're young, they don't know about the impact of the Second Vatican Council and Pope John XXIII, could you give us a broader historical uh, movement that's occurred here? Yes, uh, Pope John the Twenty Third called the Council in the early '60s, and uh, it brought together all the bishops of the world and uh, the theologians, many of whom had been under uh, fire under the previous papacy, Pope uh, Pius XII, and uh, it definitely was a reform movement, and it it gave inspiration to the poor, especially in South America, uh, and after the Council, the movement of liberation theology, which had a a, uh, a principle of preferential option for the poor, this really took off, and it created base communities, which was a new way of doing church, where uh, everyone had a voice, not just uh, the person at the altar. And um, this non-hierarchical, this far more horizontal and circular approach to Christianity and to worship uh, was a big threat, of course, to certain people in Rome, but it was even a bigger threat to uh, the CIA. When, when Reagan was elected two months later, there was a meeting of his National Security Council in Santa Fe, New Mexico, to discuss one thing. How can we destroy liberation theology in Latin America? And they concluded, we can't destroy it, but we can divide the church. And so they, they went after the pope. They gave him lots and lots of cash for solidarity in Poland. And in exchange, uh, they got the, the permission, if you will, the, the uh, commitment on the part of the papacy to destroy uh, liberation theology. And this is very much documented, is actually documented by Carl Bernstein, of all people, in a cover story in Time magazine, where he kind of creates a hagiography of Reagan and the pope uh, together, uh, creating so much good. But Bernstein, I think, was very naive about what was really going on in terms of the church itself. Because the reform of the church, part of the council was to declare freedom of conscience, and it said every Christian has a right to freedom of conscience. Well, all that was destroyed by uh, uh, Pope John Paul II and Cardinal Ratzinger. So the reforms of the Vatican Council were, were stuffed. And the reason this is a schism, therefore, is that in the Catholic tradition, a council trumps a pope. Popes do not trump councils. For the last 42 years, the, these two papacies have been undoing 
all the values that the Council stood for. And this is what the sisters are now undergoing. Uh, just as they attacked 105 theologians, now they're accusing the sisters uh, of, uh, what should I say, not participating in the Inquisition. And uh, God bless these sisters, who are the nuns on the bus. And so many of us know them because they have been on the front lines carrying out the values of Vatican II, especially values of, of justice and peace work and working with the marginalized. Matthew Fox, why were you um, defrocked? Why were you forced out of the Catholic Church? You say it's because of liberation theology. Explain. Well, I was uh, first I was silenced for 14 months uh, by uh, Ratzinger, and then uh, I, I was allowed to speak again, and then three years later I was expelled. But he drew up a list of complaints. Uh, number one was that I I was a feminist theologian, he said. I didn't know that was a heresy. Number two, I call God mother. Well, I prove that all, all kinds of medieval mystics call God mother, and, and so does the Bible, although not often enough. Um, number three, I prefer original blessing to original sin. I wrote a book called Original Blessing, in which I prove that uh, original sin, Jesus never heard of it. No Jews ever heard of it. How can you build a church in the name of Jesus on a concept which is fourth century A.D., that is original sin. And you know what else happened in the fourth century besides original sin ideas is the church inheriting the empire. If you're going to run an empire, original sin is a real fine dogma to promote because it makes everyone confused uh, about why they're here and so they get in line much more efficiently. Uh, I did, and they accuse me of not condemning homosexuals, which of course I do not. Uh, uh, obviously, God intends homosexuals, so there wouldn't be 8 to 10 percent of our population uh, uh, all over the world uh, with this special grace. Uh, they said, I work too closely with Native Americans. Well, I do work closely with Native Americans. I've learned so much from Native American teachers and, and rituals, such as sweat lodges, sun dances, vision quests. I don't know that that's a heresy, to, and I don't know what working too closely means. So um, those were, were some of the objections, and really none of them um, hold water. They're really Rorschach tests about what really freaks out the Vatican. And of course, above all, it's, it's women and sex. And uh, that is the agenda. Whenever there's fundamentalism and fascism, it's about control. That's why the Vatican, the Taliban, and Pat Robertson are, have this in common. They're all freaked out by the possibility of bringing the divine feminine back, and, and with it, of course, the equal rights of women. And uh, the current uh, the scandals that have been rocking uh, the uh, the Vatican uh, and and the entire church, obviously the pedophile scandals in in recent years, but also the corruption scandals within the Vatican itself. There's this uh, report that's uh, that has been produced uh, by a group of cardinals investigating some of the corruption, but they're not going to release it until the new pope is named. Uh, your sense of whether any of this had uh, to do with uh, the pope's decision uh, to resign? I'm sure it did. I was actually told that um, when he received the report uh, and looked at it, six hours later he, he announced he was resigning, and he put it in a safe and said the next pope can deal with this. So uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's pretty clear that there is a connection. But again, it, it was building up. I mean, as you say, there's been, and, and there's a lot more going on there behind the scenes than the press has yet uh, learned, I can assure you. Uh, there's been so much cover up. And uh, when, I, I, when Ratzinger made himself pope, I went to Wittenberg and pounded 95 theses on the door. And a year and a half ago, I was in Rome, so I, I translated them into Latin, I mean Italian, and pounded them at Cardinal Law's Basilica on a Sunday morning. And um, it was so interesting. A 40-year-old Italian man came up to me, a Roman. He said to me very simply, he said, I used to call myself a Catholic. Now I just call myself a Christian. I was very struck by that. Right under the Pope's nose there, uh, Italians, too, are beginning to catch catch the, the truth of things, that uh, we're in a, a great historic moment. An 1,800-year-old institution in the West is melting before our eyes. And um, uh, it's painful. It's, it's ugly. On the other hand, it's also a moment for breakthrough and for uh, pushing the restart button on Christianity, returning to the really 
powerful uh, message of, of Jesus and his followers throughout the centuries, uh, the mystics and the prophets, uh, and uh, just hearing your, your broadcast about Dr. King brings it all back, uh, and, uh, and this uh, French fellow who stood up to fascism. You know, when my book was translated into German, I got a, a letter from the translator saying, I cried many times translating your book. She said, because my generation, she's in her 40s, in Germany, was promised never again, no more fascism. But your book proves that fascism is back, it's in the church, especially the German and Polish wing of the church. She said every German has to read this book, whether they're religious or not. And I think it's true in, in America, too, that um, uh, like this fellow who died at 95 reminds us of fascism is worth fighting and it's worth acknowledging us there. Susan Sontag defines fascism institutionalized violence. Catholics have been going through institutionalized violence for 42 years. Ask any of these theologians who've had their jobs ripped away from them. Some of them have died of heart attacks. Some have died of poverty in the streets because they couldn't get work. Um, but of course, talk to the these young people who were abused by priests, and then uh, the cover-up was put into place by people like Ratzinger, who protected the institution at the expense of every one of these children. And Jesus has something to say about that. Put a millstone around your neck and throw yourself in the water. I think that's what uh, Cardinal Ratzinger's confessor should tell him to do in symbolic terms uh, before he meets his maker. I think he has some, some uh, reparation uh, to do, at least internally, uh, before he leaves the scene. And uh, Matthew Fox, in terms of the speculation as to who the who will be the successor to uh, Pope Benedict, obviously there's a lot of talk about there may be for the first time a uh, a, a pope from the global South. Uh, do you see any substance, any possibility for real substantive change uh, in church policy, no, ma no matter who the successor is? Sadly to say, I do not, because every one of these voters. Uh, was appointed uh, by Ratzinger or the previous pope with Ratzinger's approval. So they all think like them. You see, the dumbing down of the church has been uh, what's really brought about this pedophile crisis. Because when you don't have leaders who are intelligent and with conscience, but only yes men, which is what they've been appointing for 42 years, uh, uh, you know, you don't have intelligent response to crises such as finding a pedophile in your midst. And uh, there's a a North, Af a North American bishop, I will not name him, Archbishop, who 20 years ago wept in the presence of a friend of mine and said to him, there's not a single bishop they've appointed the last 20 years that I can respect. Well, now we can say the last 42 years. So frankly, I think there are a few names that, that come up. There's this fellow in Africa who unfortunately, though, is a complete homophobe who's been endorsing all the homophobic uh, uh, violence in, in African um, uh, 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 laws lately, so, and, and he's head of the Peace and Justice Commission in, in the Vatican. Uh, one would hope it won't go that far. Um, there is a, an Austrian uh, cardinal who is a Dominican who actually showed a little bit of, um, of uh, independence uh, once or twice. This is O'Malley from, San, from uh, Boston, who's a Franciscan and therefore did not does not want to be pope. <laughs> and I think that might be a real good criterion, although I don't know anyone in their minds at this time in history who'd want to be pope. Matthew Fox, but, uh, we're going to leave it there. I want to thank you being... very much for being with us, author of over two dozen books, most recently, The Pope's War, Why Ratzinger's Secret Crusade Has Imperiled the Church and How It Can Be Saved. Matthew Fox is a former Catholic priest who was first stopped from teaching liberation theology and creation spirituality by Cardinal Ratzinger, then expelled from the Dominican order to which he belonged for 34 years. He currently serves as an Episcopal priest, speaking to us from San Francisco. When we